Buongiorno, buonasera, benvenuti amici. Welcome my friends. My name is Vincenzo and welcome once again to my channel Fountain Pen Therapy. Today we are going to move away from fountain pens and sexy videos on, on various pen um, or various pens and instead look, be looking at some maintenance and some care that we need. What I'm going to propose to you today is to look over to build your arsenal of tools, especially for fountain pen beginners or collectors that are just starting to get into the hobby or that just want to know how to maintain their fountain pens. So I'm going to propose the 10 most essential tools that you'll need in order to maintain and care for and fine tube, fine tune your nibs. Now, we all know that fountain pens are how can I say this, not only a great writing tool, obviously, but also it's a, it's a work of art, and I, and I truly believe that. They're designed with elegance, they have a certain beauty, they have a certain charm that no other pen can match. But one of the most important parts of that fountain pen is the nib. It is responsible for what we normally regard as smoothness, of the writing, and, but also, and perhaps even more importantly, the ink flow. However, in my opinion, like any other tool, uh, fountain pens and fountain pen nibs require maintenance, they require care to not only ensure optimal performance, but also to make sure that they last a long time. So in this blog, what I propose is that I will discuss fountain pen nib care and also fine nib tuning so you can keep your fountain pen in top condition. And without if any further ado, I'm going to switch cameras, go to my overhead, and we'll look at what those 10 most essential tools are that I propose you, uh, you uh, gather, or purchase, and keep in your arsenal. So we'll be right back. Okay, so we're back. Um, just my overhead, you can see the tools uh, that I'm going to be reviewing one, one at a time are all in front of you. Now, you know, the first step, I think, in, in caring for your fountain pen nibs is to, it goes without saying, to clean them regularly. In other words, uh, and that goes the same with the pen. When you clean the pen, uh, you, you, you clean the nib. You know, over time, that nib will get encrusted with dry ink. The tines will be clogged, etc., etc., etc. It may even have uh, stains of a certain color of ink, which, which will impact on, you know, your, when, you're, uh, when you're changing that ink. Uh, if it, you're using a red ink and then you want to use a yellow ink, well, the, you know, the red tainted or the red tint can still be lingering and affect your yellow, uh, yellow ink, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So over time, you know, th th there's residue that accumulates on the nib, and it, it's going to definitely affect performance. Now, you know, you can clean the nib by simply running it under warm water uh, once you've removed it from its casing, or you can use a bulb syringe, which we will look at to flush out some of that ink residue when you have stubborn nibs that you can't pull out of its casing. Um, and if you have, you know, a real stubborn stain, you, you know, you can use cotton swabs dipped in warm water with a little bit of, you know, soap material to, to, to kind of gently remove those stains, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But so you need to clean them out. So let's look at all these tools. I put them all aside, and we'll start one at a time, and we'll see where where we're going with all this. So. The first thing that I recommend is that you get yourself, uh, you know, a microfiber cloth. Um, I I get typically I get these at uh, I believe I got them at any dollar store. You know, uh, uh, different colors. Yeah, as you can see, this one's gone through quite a bit of work. Uh, I like it because it's got all my ink colors, and every time I, you know, I I, I fill a pen, uh, you know, I clean the residue with that, clean my fingers with it, and these things clean really nicely. You know, I, I don't throw them in my washing machine. God forbid my wife would kill me, but 
you know, I just run them under hot water, let them soak for a few, and all that ink falls out. Most of it is water-based ink, so it's going to re be removed. Uh, some of them that are more permanent inks, well, you'll see permanent stains, but they come out clean nicely. And they're soft, and, you know, you when you, when you need to, um, I like to say, when you need to operate on a nib, uh, you know, it's sitting on, uh, on soft fiber, and you know if it's messy if the nib is dirty it doesn't it, it it keeps it it keeps your surface clean so must microfiber or any cloth but i recommend microfiber ones okay that's the same first thing now the next thing is this is your nib let me just see if i could okay the nib typically is in a casing uh, i don't know how, how else i could refer this to and that casing screws into uh, you know the the pen if you will uh, you know it's got a flow mechanism here so the ink from the pen which is you know most of the times there's a converter or if it's an eyedropper it it's directly goes into this little slitter here this little hole and then slowly the the ink will draw into that casing into that feed this this is the feed uh and that's what creates the flow through the nib now that feed is typically plastic sometimes it's ebonite and sometimes some of these feeds are a little more a little more um i would say a little more uh uh, soft they're softer they, especially there's these pen b pen bbs pens um wonderful pens by the way chinese uh, but their their feeds are so brittle you know the little slitters here the little slits are so brittle that if you if you just press on them too much they they will literally bend on you this one's a little tougher so the key is to get this nib out of its uh, casing uh, and you've got to draw it up pick it up now if you put your fingers on the feed directly and push on it start to tug you may damage that feed so what i suggest you do is you if you're going to pull it out you pull it out from the side um, in other words the sides are a lot stronger than the top here and so you would grab it literally on the side and pull out and you just pull out now one other piece of advice and that is sometimes it could be really 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 stubborn okay that thing just doesn't come out easily so that's when the second tool comes in which is this rubber band it's just a rubber band that allows you to get a good grip on that nib on the side and you know and by pulling it tugging at it you can remove it sometimes you need two of them okay and you pull up there we go it's out so now you've got the feed you can clean that feed out you can clean that nib out and you can clean that casing okay that casing gets cleaned out so the step first step is gone. You've used your rubber band to remove your your nib. So what do we do with this nib? Well, you know, on a regular basis, you wash it, clean it, store it, change it, you know, whatever it is. Um, but sometimes that nib needs some care. In other words, you buy a brand new nib and you notice that it's just not smooth enough, or the or that the uh, the flow is not great. Uh, and sometimes there's a scratchiness now for those beginners those are the tines okay the tines of a nib and sometimes a tine is not aligned properly they've got to be perfectly aligned but if one is a little bit over the other or just a little slightly higher and in other words they're not aligned you got to get those nibs aligned those tines aligned that's one two Sometimes the, the two are so tightly manufactured that there's no flow in that slitter in that, you know, so you got to slightly open them up 
just a bit. I mean, I'm exaggerating here to make the point, but, you know, just open them up a little bit, loosen them up so that the flow of the ink is increased. So how do you do that? So that's my, uh, my next tool. Well, there are two ways. Well, there are two tools that I propose. The first tool is what, what we call these brass shims. You can purchase them. And I, by the way, all of my two things. First of all, disclaimer, and I should have done this right from the outset. Whenever you play with a nib, well, the warranty, you can assume that that warranty of, for that nib is, is automatically null and void. So if you're playing around with a $500 Momba nib, uh, you know, I would really, really suggest you send it back to the manufacturer, to the seller, or to an expert nib master who's going to fine-tune it for you, if, especially if you don't know what you're doing. But most of our nibs are steel nibs. They run, you know, you can buy inexpensive nibs at, you know, 15 cents, 20 cents. On, you know, some of the Chinese nibs are, are very, very inexpensive. And you can practice on those, if you will. And, you know, your, your Joe or Bach nibs run anywhere between 15 to $35, depending on sizes and depending on, 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 on uh, the different materials used etc cetera, etc cetera. so you know you have titanium nibs which are a little more expensive but your steel nibs are roughly 15 20 25 dollars so it's not the end of the world practice on them if you if you manage or somehow uh you know uh, screw one up so to speak well you know what it's not thousands of dollars so that's the first thing how do you, how do you use these well that tip um, needs to go into the breather hole. Now you see there's a there's a breather hole there, okay? And then there's your slitter. So you start in that breather hole and then you move your way up. So you see, I'm in between now, okay? Now, what I've done there, automatically any residue or any, any stubborn dried ink by moving it up and down your you're definitely removing it, okay? Secondly, just by going up and down, you're, you're opening up the ink flow there. The, you, whether you like it or not, that nib or the slitter in between, that gap is increasing, especially if you maneuver left and right. Um, and that left and right will also get you to lift one tine over the other so that eventually they're perfectly aligned. I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. Now, this brass chink, uh, you know, works works fine, but I find that over time, what happens is you see the the tips get damaged, so you're you know you're stuck cutting it down, and eventually it disappears. And I find it really flimsy. So over time, what I've what I'm using and what I prefer to use, and some people will. We'll just say, Vincent, what are you doing? You know, <laughs> they will. They'll look at this and say, you're not a mechanic. But I use this thing. It's a monster. I know. It's a, with different gauges, and I think mechanics use this on cars or something. Okay. And 99% of the um, all, all of the shims, if you will, that are on these things, you'll never use because they're really, really thick. I mean, this thickest one, you're not going to put that, you know, in between uh, the tines of a nib. No. So you're you're you will be using the thinner ones, which are at the end here. Okay, maybe three or four, and different sizes depending on how stubborn or how how much. But I find that these things, for example, this one is nice and light. But I find that these things are so much, so much easier to to maneuver. You know, and you're not st they don't damage like those. And you could put that into that. Look at that, fits in beautifully. And depending on how you need to how much you need, especially if you're trying to tune them, you can move up and down just until you get them right, okay? And that thing, look at this, just beautiful. Works really, really nice. And this is a thin one. You can go thicker if you find that, you know, you test it until you get the flow that's perfect. That's the way I, so I use these things. I get them, I think I bought it at 12 bucks on, on Amazon. Yes, it's a monster. Yes, most of the, 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 the shims in there I don't use. But for the, you know, I couldn't find one that just had just two or three that I need, so I'm stuck with the rest. Okay, and you may have other uses for it. So 
definitely recommend this one. Okay? So that, now, it goes without saying that um, once you've, you know, once you've you fine-tuned it, okay, it's fine, but sometimes you need to know what the problem is. And sometimes you need to see whether or not, in fact, those two tines are actually not aligned and your just natural eyesight might not be enough. That's when you need a loop. You need a magnifying loop. Now, you can either buy a magnifying glass or a loop. Now, this particular loop, which I recommend, I bought this on Goulet Pens. Again, all these sites and everything you'll find on my in my description below. You'll get all the information. What I find nice about it, first of all, it's, it's very powerful. And second, it gives me light. You see, you can turn off, on and off, the light. So sometimes you need to have, and I think the battery is going here, Matt, but, you know, you can use the light, and the light improves uh, the vision, and, you know, sometimes you're in a darker place, you can't see it properly, so the light helps. Otherwise, you can just these simple loops that you can buy, uh, and that's fine as well. But that is definitely another tool that I would put in my repertoire, okay? Mm -hmm. The other thing is that sometimes um, the nib, okay, and, um, and the feed um, may be so stubborn or you'll see you'll be pulling and pulling and pulling and tugging and tugging and it just doesn't come out, you know, and you got to clean it up. You got to clean that nib out. What do you do? You could still, by the way, use, try to use your, your brass shims even though the, the nib is mounted. It works, okay? Not AD because the shim will hit, at one point will hit the, the feed, but it's still possible, especially if you can't remove the nib. The other thing for cleaning, that's where you use the bulb syringe, okay? That you could, you know, pump it up and, and it'll get all the flow out. And so that's where your bulb comes in. Or you can go directly with the pen. You, you don't even need to remove that. Um, remove your cartridge or your converter and put that in the slot and put some warm water and just flush it out that way. So bulb syringe. Uh, some of them are really cheap and you'll see that over time the, the plastic cracks on you. I find that this one has lasted me more than all the others and it's gone through torture and you know there's no, there, the plastic is thicker and it works really fine. You can remove, I think they have different size holes or different size pumps. You can even remove it and put your pen directly in you know, or your nib directly in there and then flush it out that way as well. That works well so, as well. So that's the bulb syringe, which I also recommend. Now, okay, we've cleaned out the pen. We've adjusted the tunes. They are perfectly aligned, but the nib is scratchy. It's still scratchy for some reason because maybe one of the tips hasn't been grinded properly or you want to grind just a little bit to spoon it out. What do you use? That's where you use what are referred to as um, uh, micro mesh. Now I bought a set on on Amazon of abrasive. You know they're abrasive. It's like sandpaper, if you will, and you 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 you, you smooth your nib out that way. It gives you a chart that goes from really coarse, that this brown one, fifteen hundred, really coarse, to a really finer which is the uh, light purple, a 1200. So you have the, you know, I keep this chart because it, that way I know which is where I need to be. You know, I start at the finer ones and if that's not enough, I go up. And if it's really, really bad, then I start at the top and maybe 1800 and, and, and then work my way down depending on how bad it is. And what you do is, so, for example, this one's been used more than one, and I don't have a pen with me here, but essentially what you do is you do your S's, you know, so you get that nib, and sometimes around, some the other way, sometimes you want to put on one particular side on the other, just to get it all, you know, nice and smooth. You clean it out with your, with your soft, get rid of all the residue, and you keep going, you test it, you keep going, you test it, and then you go from the coarser one to the less coarse, uh, which is, you know, your finer one, and you'll see, you you know, you, again, circles, S, and until it, it's fine-tuned. So that's the first part, 
Okay, so, so those are, that's where you're dealing with the major grind. Then to get even smoother, um, you get these mylar or lapping films. I've seen that expression before. Bought this one at Goulet. Um, Goulet pens. And what they are is a different different meshes. This is a 1200. Uh, and, you, you know, you saw the 1200, uh, the purple one on the other side. But this is even thinner. Okay, these mylar, I think there's measurements in the back. This is a 1.0 micron. And this other one is a 0.3 micron. And they come in a set that I bought on Goulet pens. And, you know, it, Mr. Goulet over time has tested these things. So he knows exactly, you know, because he can get these sheets, you know, he can get different sizes and different gauges and gauges of, you know, 25, 26 of them. But at one point you're dealing, you know, you're not, you're not sharpening a, a knife. You're, <laughs> you, you're sharpening a, a nib. So I think Mr. Goulet has, over the years uh, realized that with these three, you're all set, you know. So, and the same thing, same principle, use, you know, use the coarser one first and then, then to the finer one until you're, your nib is uh, perfect and you can see it's gone through it's gone through quite a bit because I've always have a habit of fine tuning all my nibs when I find they're not to my to my taste okay and some you know we talk about feedback on a nib I like some feedback I like it when the nib makes a little bit of noise when it when it writes on paper um, but I also like it when it's buttery smooth so it's when it's it's so uh, uh, you know, it starts to scratch the paper uh, and even tear it. Oh, no, that, that's horrible. That's that's unacceptable. That's not feedback. That now we, you're talking about a scratchy nib that needs to be worked on. Okay, so that's that. I think I've gone through all of my tools. Have I? Yes. Oh, one more. Now, okay. So you have your fine-tuned nibs, and you got into the hobby, and you've managed to, and you've purchased many, many nibs. Where do you put all these nibs? Well, what I do is I use a little box like this. You can buy this either at a department store, uh, a tool department store, where I think they store uh, nib, you know, screwing nibs or uh, even screws in here of different different sizes. You may even buy these things at pharmacies, I think, because it's like a pill dispenser, okay? Or you can buy these things at, uh, at uh, Michael's, you know, any art supply store i think they you put your you know people like to do the beads uh well they put different color beads in these things so uh, and you can different sizes you're going to get some of only six some of them are eight whether them are ten you can get the bigger ones this one is fine for me and what i do is i i put numbers for example in this i have my number five stubs i have my number six stipula stubs here i have a general number six 1.5 stubs uh you know i have my gold nibs here i have my my medium, I have my bolds, I have my my fine, and you know you can either buy brand or sizes. And now I know some of you are really really fussy, and you say Vincent, you know you shouldn't let these nibs um, touch each other because th there's abrasion there, and you're ruining them. I I'm not to that point. I got to tell you, I mean, yeah, I've got some guys that will take every nib. And literally put it in its own box with cotton swab and etc cetera, etc cetera. I mean you know that's your choice I I find that this works for me I'm not that exaggerated I don't think I don't believe that by putting a couple of nibs in there and having them you know touch each other like that that I'm really ruining those nibs I at least I don't think so uh, so that's my suggestion and it's you know it's Andy you clear them upside down and you're not you're not constantly uh, you know, trying to figure out, oh, is that number five, number six, number four, what am I doing? You can organize them as you wish. So that's my next two. And there you have it. Um, those are nine. Now there is a tenth tool, which it's not a, it's not a physical tool per se, but per more of a, more of a website tool. What I recommend is uh, I have listed for you in the description a series of websites that I believe are essential. You need to have them saved in your bookmarks uh, some of them are where to buy nibs some of them are where they give you you know you can buy some of these other supplies etc etc so what i propose is that i will switch up the camera 
go on my computer and I'll give you just a sampling of those websites just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back. Um, look, I, I've, got, I've listed a, a dozen, if not more, websites, so I'm not going to, uh, you know, go, go over all of them. You can do that yourself. But just to give you a, an example, I have a, a series of websites of, I would say, the main stores, main retailers of pens and inks, etc. You know, you have your Goulet um, pen company, you have your Pen Chalet, you have Anderson Pens, you have Gold Spot. Those are your main state sites that I would, you know, when you're looking for something, you can always find. For example, this is the, what you see there now is the Goulet. Uh, you know, he sells replacement nibs, you, you know, pen tuning supplies. There you go. Uh, and he's got some wonderful videos, by the way, showing how to do things. Uh, you know, you see he's got the, the Goulet grip, <laughs> as he calls it, or, you know, the rubber band, if you will. He's got the, uh, the shims there. Uh, you've got the syringes. And we'll deal with the uh, inks. I'll have another episode for the, uh, what I would say, the most essential tools for ink swatching and the rest. You'll have your, you have your uh, Goulet Micro Mesh. You have your Goulet Myler paper or the, uh, you know, the, the what I called um, or what I've seen referred to as lapping films in any way. So that's, that's one of them. Another place where you can find them is, it's called Fountain Pen Supplies. Um, and you can find all kinds of wonderful things. You know, you just browse. Uh, they're a little bit cheaper here. I would think, you know, here you've got your kits, you've got your loop, uh, all kinds of stuff for inks. So that's uh, very useful. Um, Toronto Pen Company, I really recommend this company just because it's got nip, nip services and it's Canadian and I'm Canadian. So why not encourage, um, uh, you know, why not encourage uh, my, my, my confrères or my, my, my uh, citizens, if you will, co-citizens. Um, another store is called Fountain Pen Nibs. This is a great, great, I've bought several. You can find more nibs, I think, on this website than any other site. Uh, and if anybody has any other sites, please refer them to me. Uh, this one over time has become a mainstay for me. I can get the newest products are there. You can get your Joe nibs. You can get your Bach nibs. And I, you know, for those nibs here, he's got, the, look, he's got a, a whole slew. And then when you go into Joe you click on Joe, and then the, you've got different sizes, different price points, colors, etc. They even they even as they even have gold nibs, and I think wonderfully priced. Okay, very reasonably priced. So you can find all kinds of things on this website. Really recommended. Number one, in my opinion, number one site if you want looking for nibs. Okay. Then we have the the Peter Bach, you know Bach nibs. Um, I invite you to visit that as well, and. Um, so there you have it. Uh, oh, just to show you uh, where I bought my, you know, my 32 blades, uh, you know, that shim tool for 12 bucks. You can find it on Amazon. Always look for Amazon first because Amazon uh, most of the time has all kinds of things that you can. And if you can't find it there, then go to a specialty store. So that's just a just a sampling, if you will, of some of the websites that I've listed in my description. I invite you to look at each one of them, put them in your repertoire, put them in your bookmarks so that you have them uh, by, by, by category, if you will. That's what I do. And uh, you'll see that they will come in very handy. And once in a while, just browse. Browse. They may have new products on the, on, that are, are, are being sold or that have just appeared. And uh, it's a question of always staying tuned, eh? if you will, staying tuned with, with our hobby. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed. I hope I gave you some, especially for the beginners. I know the season pen lovers don't don't require all these tips they have their own uh, over time they've developed their own but i hopefully uh, a a beginner or a, a new a, a rookie in this field or in this hobby will find this uh, this video uh, informative thank you very much and please subscribe and stay tuned i've got videos coming up uh, they will be publishing regularly and um, enjoy them thank you